all the good people in our community that work behind the scenes. People are so passionate about the good that they do. We we'll look forward to seeing you every week here on the home front. Bruce and I are here all the time, and we always invite you to join us. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On the Home Front, our weekly community affairs magazine here on Charter. My name is John. I'm very happy to be here with you once again. The first part of our program this week will focus on the Center for Community Engagement here at Eastern Connecticut State University in Willimantic. Throughout the year, over 1,000 students will volunteer and serve in over 20 community organizations and local schools and all aspects of our community. It could involve things at Petey Green Prison, the No Free Shelter, WAME, uh, the soup kitchen, I think I mentioned that, uh, senior centers, many programs that connect students to people all over our community. And we're here today to talk about how people can integrate this volunteer experience in their academic programs. It's called service learning and how they can just get involved as a volunteer and serve their community while they're here on campus for the time that they're studying. We have three people very involved with the center's activities and teaching. We're going to share some stories with you. And if you're a faculty member watching our conversation, you might think about how you might integrate your work with this effort to connect students and academics and service. And if you're a student, think about this as something you might want to explore as you continue to work on your academic plans. So we're going to talk first with Nicholas Simon, who's here today. He's been here at Eastern serving for 10 years as adjunct faculty, and he is a lecturer in sociology. Very nice to have you in the program. Welcome, Nicholas. John, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Also, we're very happy to have a, an Eastern senior with us. Her name is Rebecca Russell. She's a senior in sociology, and she has a minor in criminology and anthropology, and she's deeply involved in the center's activities, and it's very nice to have you here, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Welcome. And I'm also very honored to have uh, a, a Professor Ricardo Perez. He's an assistant professor of anthropology. He's been with Eastern now for 15 years, and he's in the Department of Sociology, Anthropology, and Social Work. So welcome, Ricardo. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Nicholas, maybe you could begin a little bit. When I talk about the center and engagement, people can understand about volunteering to help. But in your work as an adjunct, how are you taking this into your academic work to help students combine service with their academic program? So uh, first, I think it's extremely important to mention that we are at Eastern Connecticut State University, That's right. which is um, a, a state university promoting a liberal art uh, education um, practically uh, applied. Right. So it's extremely important for us to encourage our students to volunteer in the community not only to volunteer but to self-reflect about their experience, to um, develop uh, their uh, abilities, to develop their, their skills, to, um, um, to think about uh, what they are uh, doing. Um, and that's um, extremely important. So it's what I, I promote um, in my courses as an adjunct. Right. Well, let me bring you in, Rebecca, because you're our shining star to let us show how people are actually doing this. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about how you made the decision to do service learning and how it's helped you on your path? Um, well, I've done a lot of uh, volunteer work outside of Eastern, and so when uh, Professor Simon introduced us to the idea of doing service learning, um, you know, that was a great experience. That was a great um, choice that he did, and I'm really grateful for professors like him and Professor Perez for even doing that in their classes. Um, I chose, you know, a program uh, suited for our schedule, just like any other volunteer could, and um, it was it was an amazing experience, and just so amazing that I continued volunteering and ended up working for uh, the Center for Community Engagement. I know you're a team leader. <laughs> Now, which program did you choose out of all the programs to have? Which one did you choose, and why did you pick that one compared to others? Uh, I chose Vanderman Place, which is an assisted living and short-term rehab facility. Um, I chose that because of my work when I was younger, working in um, um, you know homes like that. So I kind of had a little bit of experience, and it was a little you know even volunteering um, is you know going out of a comfort zone first so something a little bit familiar kind of helped me out mm -hmm. um, and I absolutely loved it um, the residents there are amazing um, and not only did I help them a lot of my mental illnesses and such as dementia and 
So um, what we do is kind of help them cope with the fact that they're living there and help them feel independent, you know uh -huh. what I mean? And, you know, doing that is such a wonderful thing. And, you know, going there every day, having them remember who you are oh, is yeah. such an it's amazing... Personal. It's personal. It's amazing. And they want to know everything about you. And, mm -hmm. you know, it really helps with my communication skills and understanding, you know. Um, just going there and you can just learn so much, you know. Everyone is from different backgrounds, so right. oh, yeah. you kind of get, you get so much advice. And I think that's really important to me. I know some of the students told me last semester that they had a kick out of helping people learn their email or yeah. how to connect yeah. with their family and how to, yeah. you know, that could be a real obstacle for seniors who are not comfortable with mm -hmm. this stuff. So that's part of the joy you see every, yeah. every time, yeah. yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's please bring uh, Ricardo into this. How have you connected your work in anthropology mm -hmm. with this effort? Well, um, I've been teaching um, anthropology courses at Eastern for 15 years now, as you uh, pointed out at the beginning. And I've been using the community-based um, perspective in my classes since probably the spring of 2013. And I've been using it very nicely with one course I design that's um, mm -hmm. about Latinos in the United States. And it's a course that affords me the opportunity to um, incorporate service learning with the um, intention to uh, motivate students to do community-based learning in Willimantic that has a sizable population of um, Latinos. And so growing, too. Yeah, it's growing, absolutely. And we keep receiving immigrants from Mexico, from Guatemala, from Puerto Rico, from other Latin American countries. So this course um, works very nicely because I have been able to um, create um, activities in the classroom, select reading materials about various um, Hispanic or Latino groups, and then as part of the course, um, students have to do um, hours, put time mm -hmm. in both in the community. And for the past four years since I've been doing this, um, students have been doing it mostly with one after-school program that is focused on the arts. It's called um, Puentes al Futuro, yes. or Bridges to the Future. And this is a very nice um, program for um, winter, middle, and high school students that um, have access to opportunities to create um, visual arts or learn typical dances from various Latin American countries. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities for them to actually write about their experiences as Latino kids in the uh, public school systems in, in Willimanti. So they reflect a little Absolutely, bit. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so uh, let me ask Nicholas, are there other examples of projects in the past that you've done with students that kind of show how service learning works in different yes. ways. So um, I encourage my students to volunteer in the community, but to select a, a site which will help them to um, develop uh, their future, to create their future. You mean their future path for work? Their future path okay. for work. Yeah. So at first uh, I uh, um, present community uh, service uh, um, as a very uh, utilitarian way for students to develop uh, knowledge, um, to develop their resume for their future work. And um, what I found uh, fascinating is that students um, uh, leave this individualistic perspective to volunteer uh, in the community, uh, to volunteer with a member of the community, and to um, to, to 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 become a better part of the of the community, um, and it's related to their um, class work because they have to write a paper to self reflect about this uh, experience. That's the really great thing about this combination because students can volunteer now in programs, but when you have a chance to integrate your volunteer work with your degree program. That's like the best kind of double dipping in the world to do because it helps you on your personal path as well as helping other organizations and the people they serve. And something that I found, I've been teaching in Eastern part-time myself as adjunct for 30 years in media. And one thing that, that still troubles me to this day is how many people get to the senior year and they haven't really thought enough about work after school and how to get your applications ready now to leave school with a portfolio of your work not wait to do that till after you graduate because those resources aren't available to you afterwards. 
And we talked about that before, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Could you give some advice to students about not waiting too long and what the benefits are to you by doing it earlier and not rushing it at the end? Definitely. Um, Tell me. I think a lot of students, you know, we're, we're there for four years and people forget that, you know, the schools within a community look so diverse and, yeah. you know, people are so comfortable staying within um, our small campus and I think it's important that they go out and um, do service work, you know what I mean? Like, this is our community for four years, I think that's very important and, like, me, my, me personally, you know, I've learned a lot about myself doing this work and it definitely has helped me. Um, kind of figure out what I would like to do, especially since we have so many different programs and um, you can choose which one, you know, has the most interest to you. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. It's great to put on the resume. It shows that you're a people person. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not all about you. It's about the community and helping others. I think that's super important and people look for that on resumes too. And, and do you think for some students who just begin as a volunteer, for example, and then they get more involved, maybe they become a team leader like you, which is a part-time job, but the volunteer aspect opens the door for everything else? Definitely. Is that fair? Definitely, because it, volunteering kind of, um, it gives the Center for Community Engagement um, insight into the type of person you are. If you're doing a lot of work, that shows that you have compassion, you know, you want to learn, you want to have understanding for different cultures and different types of people, and that's kind of the people that, you know, any kind of business would want. So yes, starting out as a volunteer, you know, they, you know, they saw, oh, Rebecca, she's doing this much work, you know, mm -hmm. she's coming every week, she comes with a smile on her face, she loves what she's doing, and that's so important. So I definitely think that's, that's one way, to, you know, to get me even more involved. Right. Well, let me give some contact information to up on the screen. If you'd like to contact the good folks at the Center for Community Engagement, they're at 333 Prospect Street, right at Wyndham Street Extension on the campus, very close to everything. The other thing is, go to the website. They're based at the Eastern website. So if you go to www.easternct.edu, that's the main Eastern site, and then forward slash CCE, you'll get everything there about the programs, how to volunteer, how to register, some archives and blogs and media posts. But you'll find everything that they're doing there for you to think about what would be the best match for you, especially if you're planning for your next academic year. So you can think about it that way. Uh, and the center has a phone as well, 465-0090. You can also call, and I'm sure Irene will be happy to talk to you. Kim Silcox and Luis Rodriguez, is, uh, she's the director. Luis is the assistant director. They're there throughout the year to help you with the programs and to connect the center to all these community groups. So if you're faculty, think about this. If you're a student, think about this. And we have just a few minutes left, and I wanted to ask you two faculty guys, what would you say to other faculty that might encourage them to think about this the way you are in terms of the benefits to them as a teacher and how it helps you on your path to engage in service learning with your students? Mm -hmm. How has it helped you? Well, um, me personally, it's, it's been very um, beneficial to the way I conceive of um, a liberal arts education, the type of education that Eastern is renowned um, to offer. Um, also from my own background as an anthropologist, I always tell students that anthropologists do things in the field, right? So students get from our early um, point in the semester an experience of being placed in somewhere <laughs> in the community. So we've tried to um, consider Willimantic as a place for um, students to be involved. So that um, pedagogy of community-based learning is, is very beneficial because it ties very nicely with the curriculum that we can design. So my recommendation for faculty members who might be um, thinking about the possibility of incorporating service learning is that <laughs> service learning can be nicely um, incorporated into any course. It doesn't have to be necessarily a course in the social sciences or in mm -hmm. the humanities. Mm -hmm. Even in the natural sciences, people or faculty in those um, programs can also consider applying and incorporating service learning because it's how they the course, the curriculum, the reading materials connect with what is going on beyond the confines of the classroom. All right, and like you said, that's part of the students figuring out their path for after school exactly. with some experience. Exactly, yes. And how does it work for you, Nicholas, in the same way? 
well, students are more engaged. They come to class and they want to share their experience. They can relate uh, the material to their experience. So as a, as a professor, it's uh, uh, an amazing experience. But also as an uh, active and engaged uh, citizen, um, I am in front of other uh, active and engaged citizens who try to um, change the world, to create a better world. And that uh, uh, very important uh, uh, for me, like for every professor. Okay. Well, that's a very good note to end on, and I want to congratulate you, Rebecca, also on your excellent work and your success, mm -hmm. and I wish you the very best. Thank you so much, John. Yeah. So once again, the center is at 333 Prospect, 465-0090 is the phone. Go to the website for all the info you need to follow up. is easternct.edu forward slash cce. And uh, that's how we're going to wrap up this segment here on the home front. We're going to take a short break and come back with our second part of the program this week. Stay with us.